Welcome to Fridays with Anne. This is a series of conversations with Belgian homeopath Anne Fafake about homeopathy. I will ask her curiously whatever confuses me in homeopathy, like case taking, case analysis, or theory in general. And Anne will answer according to her insights, experience, and most recent findings. You, the viewer, are invited to participate actively, so please feel free to send in comments and questions. And now today's episode of Fridays with Anne. Hello and welcome to Fridays with Anne. Hello, Anne. Hello, Jost. Okay, for today, um, I want to bring in something that I was pondering recently, uh, and it's uh, we have been speaking about a lot of uh, treating individuals and taking their individual symptoms and putting them in the individual um, classifications and so on. And mm. now I would like to ask you about um, treating individuality versus treating collective, treating uh, collectivity, no, that's not a word, collective aspects. And yeah, would invite you to to share your opinion on this and also how you differentiate or how you, how you understand this. Uh -huh. This is kind of a, a vast topic, but very interesting. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, and I, actually, I pondered a bit myself before because uh -huh. no, because eh, we have a friend of mine, Peter Chapel, so we had this discussion about uh, what is the collective and what is the, say the importance of the collective and and uh, is the individual treatment uh, uh, a delusion after all or is it uh, appropriate and all that so I, and I usually I am the one who argues that um, the individual prescription you know that uh, the similar the individual prescription is what we should do hmm? but do we have to uh, so his people? opinion Sorry for interrupting, but his opinion would be that there is no individual treatment. Yes, he, he would even go that far in saying individual individuality is uh, um, to say is in itself a delusion. It just doesn't. All mean. right. So he would say, you know, we're just a, 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 a conglomerate of the collective, and we have collective uh, miasms, inherited traits. We have collective traumas. Uh, we have uh, an environmental uh, things like toxins, and and this all defines us and produces our symptoms. So if we take away all that, all those layers, he would uh, treat with, with virtually the same remedies for uh, everybody. Then he he claims to have uh, yeah treated the patients because there's no symptoms left. So uh -huh. and so he says it's, it's not even necessary, and in many cases it won't even help with your similar if you don't deal with the collective. Wow, that is a big claim, and that is an interesting um, perspective on this all. Yes, it is. But now, what do we see in practice? Of course, that is the only thing I can base my my theory on is, is yes. my patients present with, and I have to admit. Some patients seem to present with that clear individual picture, mm -hmm. which, I, yeah, which, I, which I would say is the basis of our prescription. We try mm -hmm. to match the remedy with the individuality of the, of the person. And some patients like seem to present more or less with collective issues. And, and I can clarify this a bit. This, um, I, this person with a strong identity, like the mm -hmm. identities of the foreground, we all have an identity, of course, but with some people it seems to be stronger and more outspoken than the collective issues. Uh -huh. With a strong identity also have collective issues. We yeah. don't have. We, we're not uh, living in a vacuum. We are all living uh, in a particular time and place and are influenced by the collective. Yes, and before we move on, please mm -hmm. give a few examples or, or hints about what collective means so that we okay. kind of get a, a firmer grasp on what this means collective okay. what i understand by the collective is uh let's say um well at least it presents itself very often in epidemics so uh -huh. 
seems to be a collective issue that expresses itself by a collective disease. Most of the time it is contagious or it was contagious in former times, like the mm -hmm. S standard. <coughs> And um, um, like after the World War One, we had this uh, Spanish flu, and, and if there's a disaster, you have a cholera outbreak, or in Africa, you have all those uh, uh, epidemics still, uh, malaria, and I don't have to, you know, to sum them up, you know. While with us now, in our modern times, most of the patients we see, they have a different kind of collective or they present with a different kind of collective disease, like they have this, we call them modern diseases, but in the journals they are called epidemics, epidemi epidemics of autism, of chronic fatigue, of burnout, of depression, of um, uh, allergies, uh, intolerances, um, HDAD, uh, <laughs> Lyme disease, just name it. Uh -huh. We see a lot of those patients and they're it's like epidemics. It's like uh -huh. it didn't exist 30, 40 years ago, or were very rare. And now we see them like in, in such numbers. And cancer, of course, is also it's called the cancer epidemic. Yeah? Uh, it's also, you could say, a, a, an epidemic disease. So there's uh -huh. different kind of epidemics. You could say the more acute epidemics after uh, uh, after a, a traumatic event, it could be an earthquake or whatever, a war, or uh, an epidemic because of the collective issue of the uh, society where the patient lives in. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then, if that is on the foreground, I would really consider to treat the collective problem rather than the individual. Right, so you would treat the collective issue in the individual yes. then rather than the individual issue. And uh, what does it look like in practice? Can, do you have an, an example for this? Yeah, well, it, it looks a little bit like clinical prescription. Uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh. like I was wondering, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. you prescribe for the disease picture rather than for the personality picture. And then even within the clinical prescription you you, uh, you you would look then for peculiar clinical symptoms or, or physical symptoms the totality of hmm? right because yeah as we treat an epidemic you could say the totality of this particular epidemic that would not leave you with hundreds of remedies maybe 10 mm -hmm. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah of course yeah or maybe like you know in jeremy Sher's case he has like a certain remedies that he uses a lot in those uh, eight patients he, he has of course he knows many more remedies but these 30 are the the majority of his cases uh -huh, uh -huh. all right so even in that sense aids is an epidemic yes mm -hmm. you can consider it in that particular way if if somebody even with Lyme disease or whatever, presents with a very strong individual experience, and you can see the picture, I would give the simulament. Still, even when it's a collective um, disease picture. Yeah. But if yeah. the indi individual is strong uh, and on the foreground, then still I would try with the simulament first and see with, right. the, with the, um, uh, the rest of the symptoms, but we often said, or I often said, in chronic fatigue, you have this chronic fatigue picture, and it's very hard to see to see even an individual person. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. all look like this syndrome. You have the syndrome of symptoms, and they all look more or less the same. And yeah, and with syndromes, I find it even harder. For example, chronic fatigue or burnout. I mean, this is not. This is also not a real diagnosis because it can. Mm -hmm. Uh, encompass so many vague symptoms yes. and uh, other than maybe uh, Lyme disease or AIDS which are a little bit more circumscribed or have some parameters which are more um, outstanding. Yes, you're right. So they are even more difficult like burnout and chronic fatigue. It's very hard to have clear symptoms or, or a collective yeah like a, a totality of symptoms because they're all vague sometimes but not always sometimes you help out with bacteria 
And uh -huh. not too much to our surprise afterwards. We say, yeah, well, yeah. You can imagine that a person who is a constitutional bacteria is more prone to those kinds of syndromes. Yes, yes. I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. And maybe even if bacteria have the role of um, clearing up, um, tidying up, taking out garbage in our system and are not really the infective or ill-making agent, mm -hmm. then maybe this is also what is lacking in the in this, these syndrome states. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this is maybe also another reason why the bacterium remedy would could work then. Yeah, could work. Yeah, sometimes I call those patients the canaries, you know, uh, the, the, the first ones to succumb under the enormous pressure of the environment. Uh -huh, yeah. Others, I don't know what makes a difference. I don't know why a person would choose to have a, a to, to present with an expression of collective issues yeah. rather yeah. than. Uh, individual issues, I don't know, but anyway, it seems to be that <laughs> you see that the one or the other. Eh? Yes, yes. So, if a person lives this out, maybe it's just showing that the pressure of the collective is too much. Hmm? Yeah, uh, yeah, we have to deal with that. And in my point of view, whether a person is treated for a co collective issue and treated, I mean, cured or he is treated and cured for an um, individual issue, both benefits or the collective benefits from both ways. Right, yeah. So yeah. In the end, it doesn't really matter for the collective whether you enter this door or this door. Right. Whether you choose this or this. I see. And so this is for you, but I mean, collective meaning or collective issues are, if we try a definition, is this, challenges that humans are confronted with of our times yeah i would see it as um yeah connected to a certain place and time a certain period in history a certain combination of uh, philosophy of, of of you know way of life of, of what people believe what people a believe. paradigm Paradigm, yeah, this and, and within even within one paradigm, you can have different collective right. clusters, yeah, and, and with with you know, with typical topics, typical issues, and then some people seem to be seem to resonate with that and display the symptom picture and express it. Mm. So, in your experience, then an individual remedy does not even work or work very well so you have to prescribe a collective remedy yes, yes. and that's also an experience that i was a little bit uh how does it say disappointed uh by that yes i have the similimum and you know uh the, the violence should start to play and all that and the patient is not even affected by it because yes after two months, same thing. It comes after four months, nothing changed. After six months, it's exactly the same. So you have to admit that the simulament didn't do a thing. So it's right. not, it is not the source of the problem. It's not right. the problem. Yeah. So it should even be possible then, and what that's obviously what Jeremy Sher also arrived at, to, to find a, a genius uh, epidemicus for these collective issues for these syndromes and i think that's exactly what peter chapel is doing right or at least he's one of the persons maybe there are more homeopaths that i'm not aware of that are really dealing with these collective issues like and can we sorry no, no, go on. and can we then maybe or can i maybe then understand his perspective that there is no individual treatment a bit better by thinking okay the biggest challenge for as far as I know, he's also uh, working in Africa, right? Yeah, so people working with his, with his remedies in Africa. Yeah. Maybe this is the biggest challenge that the people there are facing, are these epidemic uh, diseases. And once those are gone, this is um, 
given their life circumstances, um, all they needed. Well, yes, if you treat them, let's say for a malaria, you won't see them back because they'll be very happy. Yeah. <laughs> and as and we they won't say, expect other things. Oh, no. And they don't have any other problem so yeah. far because, you know, as a homeopath, we always say make sure that your patient keeps breathing. That's the first thing. Yeah. Gives what? Uh, keeps breathing, you know. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing. So, the first things first. If, if, you're, if your life is in danger, your, your physical integrity is in danger, then you have to take care of that first. If you have a fatal mm. disease, well, it's clear. It's the same with, with cancer. You can give a similar to a cancer patient, but it won't be enough. Mm. If you don't deal with this body that, that it's showing you it's in an end stage, even if it's only cancer stage one, yeah. there is diseased body that allows the cancer tumor to develop. So mm. it's not enough to give us a minimum and say, go in peace, I will see you in two months, you can't do that. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> you have to deal with the body to keep the body uh -huh. alive, <laughs> and yeah. you can see yeah. what you can do. Yeah. Another um, way of, of seeing collective that I came across recently, uh, which doesn't mean that it's anything new. It was the uh, the conclusion that uh, Tina Smits, uh, a homeopath from uh, the Netherlands, came to, mm -hmm. and uh, but he means then, from what I understand from our conversation, or he means a different different type of of collective, because he was um, speaking about universal. Uh, layers and I can understand that also in terms of collective as in we all have these in common or share these yeah. but um, this is not this uh, this has not really to do with this type of collective right no I read in his uh, Smith's work and, and he, uh, he's, he was a great homeopath absolutely and I, you know he did wonderful work but He's indeed, his idea of collective is universal. I think that's a distinction we have to make here. Yeah. Uh, universal issues. And in a way, Peter Chappell also actually points to universal issues, like, let's say, uh, traumatic uh, um, residues of fear, like survival issues. Right. Ah, yeah. Isn't he also dedicating a lot of his work towards uh, collective traumas yes, is it absolutely. war trauma or uh, yeah. refugees or something like this yes yes and, and of course he claims like if you go like four or five generations there's this war everywhere you know mm. <laughs> it's not like i didn't go to war and my parents yeah didn't. yeah but even a few more generations and you will you will have ancestors who, who face these problems? So yes, it's it's this collective traumas. You could say universal traumas. And then it's mid the same. I think it's not not um, particularly emphasizing the traumas, but the uh, universal mm. issues. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Um. That's more like it. it he's not as I, I haven't read much much about it. Just. Uh, uh, the basic idea but it's not about traumas it's more like um, universal issues that's a, that's a good word like um, things that we tend to suffer from commonly like a feeling of uh, lack of uh, self-love or a lack of confidence or a lack of um, having really arrived into our bodies feeling in our bodies or mm -hmm. a yeah. lack of protecting or protection from the outside Mm -hmm. from the other, from energy coming mm -hmm. from outside. Yeah. That's yeah. rather universal issues, right? Yes. And it uh, occurs to me that you use the word and it's very rightly chosen, lack of. And mm -hmm. it's more like the, uh, we say the delusion that we lack anything because we don't. Yeah. yeah. The, the basic human um, condition experience is one of lacking anything, mm. which is impossible. In reality, we're yeah. not lacking anything, but we feel we, we our sensation. We like love. We like security. We like well, you, you know, name it. You know, 
and, and therefore we feel miserable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He tries with, with particular remedies to meet this, this need to, yes. to cure this. I don't know. I don't know. There's indeed universal um, experiences uh, based on a, on, on, on a wrong idea. On the can, idea. can you repeat that, please? I didn't hear. Yes, it is uh, a universal conviction, but it's based on an erroneous idea. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you would hope that with the good phenomenon, a person would come to the conscious awareness that this is not so, that he is okay any, anyway, anyhow, unconditionally, no matter how, and it's, if he is okay, the world is okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, we might say that Tino Smith was looking for the genius epidemicus of these universal issues, so to speak. <laughs> yes, of humanity. Let's of humanity. humanity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, maybe you have the luck. Yeah. Yeah, and isn't I haven't checked that, but um, because I don't know much about Peter Chappell's work beyond the superficial information of. Um, uh, what we spoke about. Uh, so I don't know if, if there is any intersection between if he treats universal aspects of hum humans and Tino Smith did as well, if this intersects somehow in their remedies or the conclusions that they found. I don't know because Tino Smith used, uh, let's say, existing homeopathic remedies except yes. one. He made one like Carson Zinum Cum Cuprum. I want his own. Uh, invention, I think. While uh, Peter makes his own remedies, ah, right, and right. they're not really homeopathy even. And some uh -huh. them, some people refuse to use them on this basis. Like homeopaths say, no, I won't use them because it's not homeopathy. Even if they work, I won't use them because it's not homeopathy. And it's not. He doesn't claim it's homeopathy. Okay, they're, they're, it's not homeopathy, homeopathy because it's not chosen based on. Totality or similarity or and not remedies. He doesn't use homeopathic remedies. Preparations. He makes his own. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Doesn't he even have uh, remedies to for um for enlightenment or something like this? Probably. If you can make remedies, you can make remedies for everything, right? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, so in that um, area, we cannot speak about experience. Um, so the treating the collective is a little bit uh, level one prescription. Um, when this is what is in the foreground, right? Yes, level two, yeah. and and, and right, yeah. yeah. What is in the foreground? That means the whole person is like overwhelmed by the collective disease and issue. He's not functioning. It's all his symptoms are um, uh, only that picture. Yeah. All, all he tells and all is uh, connected to all his feelings and bodily and, and mental, emotional feelings are all this one thing. For us, it's easier to understand if you have the cholera that you know you express yourself very clearly. <laughs> <laughs> you're on the toilet and you're you know you going up and you're shaking with fever and all. It's very simple. So these collective diseases we use more words because they're yes. more simple, they're more vague, they're more all over the place, and they're less acute. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, there's in the same way. All per se, it's all that you see. You don't see yeah. anything else, and you, you heard it before because you, the other patient with the same syndrome has virtually the same uh, syndromes, the same symptoms. Yeah, yeah. It's very hard yeah. to differentiate on a, on a personal basis. Yeah. And then I would try to prescribe for the epidemic disease. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and according to also uh, to the idea of a genius uh, epidemicus, it's not necessary to find an individual remedy. Or, I mean, you might have a, a few remedies that fit yeah. this presentation, and within these you can individualize, right? Yes. 
it's very similar to treating cancer. Of course, we don't do that and all that, but you know, Ramakrishnan, <laughs> the, with his, with his uh, cancer procedures, uh -huh. he prescribes a miasmatic remedy, you know that, a, a close minimum to the movement, yes. what he sees as personal, <laughs> and then an org remedy and daily. Yeah, and right, he, yeah. even that might not be enough. The patient yeah. still needs some, you know, dietary uh, lifestyle changes uh, in a major way. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, on top of the homeopathic treatment that is much more intense than just uh, one similar and, and off you go. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's you can compare it to to uh, to uh, a cancer treatment. Mm -hmm. If you are you know, confronted with a cancer patient. You probably won't try to go into all depths of his personality. He has now more important things to deal with. Yeah, 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 I see. Uh -huh. Excellent, okay. Great. Yeah, that was very insightful. Um, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we can sum up that um, when the patient presents with um, our modern syndrome diseases um, and this is in the foreground mm -hmm. of the consultation and there is little individuality or little of the yeah little of the individuality of the eye coming through that would allow for um, seeing a deeper picture we can prescribe for the for this collective issue mm -hmm. um, at hand. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, more to more for me to ponder about. Great. <laughs> okay. So maybe thank you very much. Next Friday for all the questions for more. Questions. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 We have more topics, and we have definitely more groups to discuss. Group Absolutely. aspects. Thanks very much for this one, and I look forward to the next one. You too. Okay. Bye, Jos. Have a good Bye, weekend. Man. You too. Bye.